Hello and welcome to the rule three video. You're making great progress so far. Rule number three is in the general section and focuses on the definitions. This is going to be a very important one for you to fully know and understand all of the definitions that we cover because they're going to be used throughout the entire lesson of all the rules. So get a clean sheet of paper for your notes. Let's get ready to go and dive into rule number three. Rule three A states the word vessel includes every description of watercraft, including non-displacement craft and seaplanes used or capable of being used as a means of transportation on the water. So this one is pretty self-explanatory, but it is very important to remember that anything that can be used or has the capacity of being able to be used as a means of transportation on the water is considered a vessel. As you proceed going through all of the rules, all of these are defined as a vessel. Rule 3b states that the term power driven vessel means any vessel propelled by machinery. Now this one's going to be pretty easy and it's pretty self-explanatory. Easy to remember because it's literally saying that it's propelled by machinery, which is a motor. Now where it can get a little tricky is with sailboats because a sailboat can be both a power driven vessel and a sailing vessel depending on how they're being propelled. Don't worry about that right now if you're a little confused because we're gonna cover that in the next rule. The term sailing vessel means any vessel under sail provided that propelling machinery, if fitted, is not being used. So this is exactly what I was talking about in the previous rule in rule 2b. So a sailboat, as long as it's using its sails and it's being propelled or pushed by the wind, even if it has a motor, is classified as a sailing vessel. The key is that the motor is not being used to propel the boat. But now, by the same token, if that sailing vessel were to take their sails down, turn on their motor, and start using the motor for a means of propulsion, it now goes from a sailing vessel to a power-driven vessel. Rule 3D says the term vessel engaged in fishing means any vessel fishing with nets, lines, trawls, or other fishing apparatus which restricts maneuverability, but does not include a vessel fishing with trolling lines or other fishing apparatus which do not restrict maneuverability. So this one can be a little tricky, and you gotta really understand this because it can get you in the final exam. Not every vessel that is fishing is classified as a vessel engaged in fishing. So let's think about this for example. If you have a shrimp boat and they are not dragging their nets, they are just a power driven vessel. It's also important to note that if you are trolling while you are technically fishing, you are not classified as a vessel engaged in fishing. Rule 3E states that the word seaplane includes any aircraft designed to maneuver on the water. So this one gets a lot of people because the last thing that you expect is to have an aircraft be designated as a vessel and be included in the navigation rules. But let's go back to the beginning where we described the definition for a vessel. And the definition for a vessel says that anything that can be used as a means of transportation on the water is considered a vessel. And a seaplane meets this criteria because the seaplane takes off and lands from the water. Rule 3F states that the term vessel not under command means a vessel which through some exceptional circumstance is unable to maneuver as required by these rules and is therefore unable to keep out of the way of another vessel. So very important when you hear vessel not under command, this does not mean that they do not have a captain or an operator. What this rule is saying in the term exceptional circumstance is that something is wrong with the vessel and they cannot move out of the way like they're supposed to. Usually what this means is that they do not have a working rudder, working propulsion, or both. Rule 3G says the term vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver means a vessel from which the nature of her work is restricted in her ability to maneuver as required by these rules and is therefore unable to keep out of the way of another vessel. Vessels restricted in their ability to maneuver include, but are not limited to, a vessel engaged in laying, servicing, or picking up a navigation mark, submarine cable, or pipeline, a vessel engaged in dredging, surveying, or underwater operations, a vessel engaged in replenishment or transferring persons, provisions, or cargo while underway, 
a vessel engaged in the launching or recovery of aircraft, a vessel engaged in mine clearance operations, a vessel engaged in a towing operation such as severely restricts the towing vessel and her tow in the ability to deviate from their course. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is a very long one and it sounds very tricky, especially if you try to remember and memorize each one of these. But the key takeaway from this rule is in the first sentence. The rule states that a vessel restricted in their ability to maneuver means a vessel from which the nature of her work so what that vessel is doing is what is causing the restriction in her ability to maneuver. So as you go through your notes and you're studying, always remember that and ask yourself, does the vessel's nature of their work allow them to maneuver or not? Now I know that this one sounds very close to what we just covered with vessels engaged in fishing and what we talked about with vessels not under command. And while all of these situations restrict the vessel from being able to get out of the way if needed, the lights and shapes that these vessels are going to display based on the criteria that they're in are going to be different. This is why they have different names because each one of those names is gonna display different lights and different day shapes. Don't worry about the lights and the day shapes if you don't know it yet. We're gonna cover that in a later rule. But I just wanted to touch on that to make sure that you understood why they were broken up into different groups if they all kind of mean that they can't get out of the way. Rule 3H, the term vessel constrained by her draft means a power driven vessel which because of her draft in relation to the available depth and width of navigable water is severely restricted in her ability to deviate from the course she is following. So what this is saying is that a vessel might not be able to deviate from her course if the available water available for her to navigate through is not deep enough. So basically what they're saying by the draft of the vessel, the draft means how much of the vessel is below the waterline. So for example, if a vessel has a draft of 10 feet, that means that that vessel below the waterline, there's 10 more feet of the vessel that sticks below the waterline. And if the available water to navigate through was less than 10 feet, that vessel would run aground if she deviated from her course. So you can see an example like this a lot here in the ports that we have in Florida, where the water outside of the channel is too shallow for the ships to deviate from their course within the dredge channel. If you've ever taken a cruise ship out of the port of Miami where I'm from, you're gonna notice that the surrounding water, coastal water, is extremely shallow. And when the ships are exiting the port, they're navigating through a deep water canal that was dredged or a channel, if you will. This is gonna allow the ship to get out of the channel into deep enough water before they can turn and start to navigate safely. Rule 3i states that the word underway means that a vessel is not at anchor or made fast to the shore or aground. So this one can be a little bit tricky and I really want you to write this down and focus on this because this can get you in the final exam. Your brain automatically is gonna think that because the term underway, it says that it's underway, the vessel is moving. And while that's partially correct, that's not the full definition. So a vessel that is underway, it is moving, but it's not being propelled by machinery. So think about a vessel that's not anchored, but they're floating and drifting along. This vessel is moving, but isn't being propelled by machinery. A vessel that is moving, but is being propelled by machinery would be classified as a vessel that is making way. So for your final exam, remember that she has to be moving, but not moving by a, a motor or means of propulsion. Making way means that she is moving with the motor. So if the vessel is made fast to shore, which means that she is docked, she is anchored, or she's run aground, she's not moving. Rule 3J states that the word length and breadth of a vessel mean her length overall and greatest breadth. This one is gonna be quite simple because obviously you know that the word length is gonna mean the overall length of the ship. And the word breadth is how wide the ship is at the greatest point. Rule 3K states that vessels shall be deemed to be in sight of one another when they can be observed visually from each other. So this is another one that's pretty self-explanatory. You can't be in sight, in sight is the key word there, of another vessel if you can't see it with the naked eye. The key is that you can see the vessel with the naked eye and not with the assist of radar or your electronics. Rule 3L, 
The term restricted visibility means any condition in which visibility is restricted by fog, mist, falling snow, heavy rainstorms, sandstorms, or any other similar causes. This one is going to be a very important one to know because there's an entire rule, an entire section dedicated to restricted visibility. It's important to know that you can have restricted visibility even during daylight hours. The very important thing for you to remember is that anything can restrict your visibility. Here in Florida, we don't have the strong fog like they have up in the Northeast, but we have severe rain and thunderstorms that will completely block your visibility to zero until they pass. Being in a restricted visibility situation is extremely dangerous. This is why there's so much dedicated to this specific situation within the rules. Don't worry, we're gonna go into this in great depth when we get to that rule. Rule 3M, the term wing in ground craft means a multimodal craft, which in its main operational mode flies in close proximity to the surface by utilizing surface effect action. And I gotta be honest with you, these are very unusual looking aircraft. I have personally never seen one in myself, but this is a picture of what one of them looks like, so you know what they're talking about. All right, you see that wasn't that bad? Congratulations on making it through rule number three. I know that this one was a long one, but it is an extremely important one because you're gonna need a full understanding of all of the definitions for the remainder of the rules and for the final exam. So far, you're making great progress. Study the notes that you've taken really well, and I will see you in the next video.